Hey everyone, this is Don Larry Penless with another episode of Life of an Inventory Auditor. Today I want to talk about the keypad design and layout of uh, the machines used in the inventory industry. Now when I first started, to go back a little bit, when I first started with WIS, then Regis in 1995-96, the inventories were largely financial. In other words, all the prices and quantities were entered by a 10 key. Now, it was about that time that they introduced the first handheld lasers. You know, the ones like you see in stores, they pick up and they, they scan some of the items. It was those kind of lasers that we were using. and stores like Shopco and Kmart and department stores like that were starting to do their UPC inventories and the emphasis was, especially in department stores, was UPC integrity. Uh, at least that's what is currently called in, in Regis. Um, I'm not sure if it's similar or what it would be called in WIS but the basic ideal is that you get every color, say, size, shape. Um, just an example. Um, something like Kool-Aid. You know, you have grape Kool-Aid, strawberry Kool-Aid, cherry Kool-Aid. And in UPC Integrity, you have to get every flavor of Kool-Aid that the store has. So they are very picky, you know, they want to make sure they have a record of all the UPCs that are in their store or as, as close to having all of them as, as possible. Now the reason why I'm mentioning this is even in a, like, a grocery store that scans now and they are UPC integrity, one still has to be able to input the number of, of items, you know, like packets of Kool-Aid, for example, into the machine in a efficient way. And that's where keypads come in into play. And the design of keypads and what the you know, material, what kind of buttons are used, I think plays an important part in inventory. Now, I saw on Wiss's website, sorry, that they, the new machines they have is more geared toward scanning barcodes. And that's quite clear because the buttons, I don't know what kind of buttons are to be called technically, but they're, they look like the buttons that you would have like on a remote control. And they don't look as hard to press as some other types of buttons. But the way they design it and the way it's designed to be held and done with one finger, kind of like you're texting on a phone, doesn't seem very efficient to me in terms of entering quantities. Now, with the RM1, the Audit, RM1, RM, even the RM2, the keys that are on, the buttons that are on the actual devices, are have more akin to to keys that are on your your computer keyboard than something from like a a remote control and those kind of buttons allow you to input numbers data into the machine through the keys as quickly as you, as you can press it um, I, I'm not sure if that would be the case with the wizards if that's what, you know, Wizards, the, from, the ones from Wiz. Um, like I said, I've never used the Wizard system or have never seen one in person, even. But, you know, the idea that 10 key is something that doesn't need to be done anymore, I think is fallacious. Um, in my time with Regis, for example, there are, it's not common, but there are quite a few cases in which 
they, for some reason, you have to hand enter the UPC. And like you say, in grocery stores, in places like that, where you still have to enter quantities. I mean, take I, I mentioned the example of Kool-Aid. Now, um, I may be a little off on the number here, but if you have those boxes, they come in, the packs come in a box. But if you have one of those wrapped in the plastic that it came in when it was shipped to the store, you can pretty much say that it's 120 packets of Kool-Aid. And that allows you to do this, you know, 120, 120 plus, 120, you know, you get the idea. 120K, 120K, one, you know, it, it, you know the, a chain calculation, which is one of the things that the, like, um, iCals, DC2s, DC5s, Titans, Audits, RM1s, kind of brought to the table is that they, they are very efficient when you're pressing the buttons and how quickly you can press the buttons and know that the, the information is going to be put in there correctly. I think I haven't really done too much 10 key with the RM2, but if, you, if, you're familiar, if you're familiar with the keyboard, you can get faster or whatever. Um, I kind of lost track of where I was going with this. While, while Wiss is thinking that 10 key is sort of a thing of the past, it's still a necessary part of the inventory industry. The ability to enter quantities quickly. Um, another thing I noticed, just looking at the pictures I've seen online, it doesn't seem that they might, and I just don't haven't seen them use that, that particular feature, but you know, I'm talking about videos I've seen on WIS site, on the WIS site. It doesn't seem like there is a way to enter alphanumeric UPCs. Um, they're probably not common, but for example, the district here, or the area I'm in, does the um, Rexburg Motors. And there's always problems with their program, and all their barcodes that they use are alphanumeric. So last time I, I did it earlier this year with the with the team, but a lot of the barcodes wouldn't scan, and the only way to get enter them in to the machine was to hand key the UPC. It seems to me that that would be something that would be either monotonous or difficult to do with a device like the Wizard. Um, in terms of the laser, I have mentioned this before, the the new lasers with the RM2s, the built-in ones that are detachable with finger lasers, have a thing where it goes like, the thing goes like this kind of. Okay, you have one cross and going up and down, which I've heard might be, so it would be compatible with the, I don't know what they're technically called, the square sort of barcodes that you see on beginning on products to you know get different codes or whatever, but those are going to become a little more um, popular usage and in, in use in like retail settings. So having that ability to read those, this you know in this early in the process would give readers a sort of advantage. Uh, like I said, I got way off from where I was. I was talking about keypads, and I think I made all, made all the major points I wanted to make about keypads, their functionality, ease of use, because all of these things, the ease of use of the keypad, the, you know, assurance that you can hit the right buttons, you know, familiarity with the design and the layout, are things that are important to someone's ability to do well in counting inventory. Um, you know, if you go too far away from something where you can enter it in quantities, you're going to severely um, 
undermine your ability to efficiently enter large quantities. Um, like I said, I, I have no stake in WIS. Um, I have really no stake in Regis, even though I work for Regis. This is just my opinion about keypads and 10 key because, you know, I, I started out on 10 key. That is sort of my bread and butter. I've, I've become rusty over the last couple of years because of the fact that I haven't worked as much as I used to. Um, at one point in time, my 10 key skill was probably, if you don't read this and you know the asset system, would be more like a top gun. And now I'm sort of at the bottom rung with the company because I work so infrequently that it's hard for me to get into a sort of rhythm and counting as fast as I could potentially do. But anyways, if you watch this up to this point, this long rambling rant about uh, keypads and machines and all that, and no, I'm not high. Um, I, 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 I'm looking at myself in the in the viewfinder, you know, the the screen on, and yeah, I look like I'm drunk or high. I'm not, as I'm, I'm just tired. Um, it's been kind of a busy day, which is why I didn't um, upload at the time that I would normally would, which would be around six o'clock, and that's the time that I really want to get into the rhythm of making videos. It's, you know, release them at 6 o'clock in the afternoon so that people will know what time new content will be put on my channel. It, sometimes it's not possible with work and other other things that happen in life. You know, life happens. If it didn't, that would be kind of boring, but life does happen and things occur. But anyways, I'm totally rambling. Um... Thank you for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up. Share this on video, social media. Subscribe to my channel for more Life of an Inventory Auditor. Thank you so much for watching again. This is Don the Repentless signing off. Be awesome, everyone. <laughs>